Welcome, Tales from the Flipside family. Here we are in episode three of Comic Shop Talk about how to open a comic shop and run a comic shop. Not like I have all the answers. We're going to have lots of guests talking about uh, how they get through things. And um, we're going to go through all the ins and outs, all the different things. Last uh, episode, we talked about the SBA and SCORE. I can't stress enough how important it is to have a business plan, a blueprint, uh, a foundation for your business. Um, with that, you can go get a loan. I opened my business without getting any money, but most, a lot of people do get a, a, a loan. And the SBA has a lot of own op loan options available out there. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the industry you're uh, getting ready to get into. Uh, it's just going to sound really bad in the beginning. It's going to sound very negative. Uh, but uh, remember when I said uh, find your coaches and not your cheerleaders? I've never been uh, much of a cheerleader, I've been told. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the misconceptions that are out there, the difficulties um, of the, the industry and the business itself. And then, you know, but I'm in it. Right. So if I think it's a circus, then I'm the head clown. But uh, I don't. I think that it's a good industry. I think uh, that you can make a living at it. And uh, that's what I, this show is all about, is trying to help you do that. Um, and I'm available. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, on Twitter uh, by my name, Emmett Garnum. On Instagram, it's Haven for Heroes. Uh, our Facebook page, Haven for Heroes. You can message us through that. Um, any questions? We've had a comic shop reach out to us, wants to be involved. It's great. We're going to we're going to get with uh, them uh, in the future. We're going to have a show with them on because uh, I want to hear from everybody and how they're surviving and how they're how they've uh, not only survived, but thrived um, <clears throat> in all these times. Uh, so one of the things, if you look up uh, how many comic shops there are in America, the latest number is 2000 comic shops. Back in 2013, Diamond had reported that there was 2,638. In 2017, you can find a lot of internet reports that say there's around 2,300. Looking it up now, the number seems to be 2,000. Um, it's probably somewhere from 1,900 to 2,500 fluxing back and forth in the U.S. Um, also, you can when you're looking for, oh, how many comic book readers are there out there? Well, I've searched it a couple of different ways, and it's really annoying because I think people just make reports and don't do math, right? So every report I could find, I don't know if they all got their research from the one place, all say 2% of Americans say that they read comic books every day. Well, that's bullshit because I own a comic book shop. I've loved comic books since I was seven and I don't read comic books every day. Um, so let's say you read comic books, a couple of comic books a week. Uh, how many do you think there is out there? They say 2%. So I did the math. I took 300 million people in America, subtracted those kids under five years old, even though some kids under five can read and do look at comic books. But just to make the number kind of fair, well, you know, don't make it too inflated. We'll take out those people. So that number is 277 million people. Well, 2% of that is five and a half million plus. There is not five and a half million people buying comics on a weekly basis and reading them every day. Everybody says, well, you don't know. There's all the, uh, like you can read online. Check out the sales for the uh, online comics, the uh, uh, Comixology, the Marvel app, they're not great. They are not great. And they're the reason why they, they turn those comics that they've had online uh, or those direct to online, they're turning them into trade paperbacks because the trade paperback sales is a lot higher. If they're counting trade paperbacks as comics, I still don't think the number is as high as 5 million, but it could be approaching that rate. The floppy reader, how many floppy readers are there? I think the number is really closer to seven thousandths of a percent 
or around 200,000. Um, through my experience of uh, how many subscribers I have in my area. So in a 50 mile radius, I probably have uh, access to 200,000 uh, people. Um, I have competition in that five, uh, 50 mile radius. So I split that number in half and I should be able to get about 70 subscribers at my number at, at the seven thousandths of a percent. I had 50 subscribers in building my business towards that higher number. Now, a couple more one way or a couple more the other. It all depends on your marketing, your ability to make uh, comic book readers and that's one of the things I, I stress the most. If you're getting into this business, your mission, if you, sh if you should accept, is to make comic book readers. That is your number one mission. Uh, yeah, it's great to have that guy that comes in and he'll drop $1,000 on that 9-8 on that you got on the wall. Uh, that's a surprise profit. But if that guy decides to get out of the comic book market, you know, if you neglected the people that come every day and keep your lights on, it's more important to have those people through the times because this whole market will correct it. If you've been around in any kind of collectibles, not only comics, it's cyclical. Uh, cycles are not have any exact timing to them, but it does come in cycles. It's um, but the comic business has lived through the cycles, right? So the most important part is the people that read every day. I mean, when I was a kid, you would roll the comic up and put it in your back pocket. You, and I know you don't never see that anymore, but how many times you go to someplace and see kids carrying a comic or you look in, walking past a car, you look in and you see comics on the back seat. Um, you don't really, we want to see that more and more. So as your job, one of the extra jobs as a comic book store owner is to make readers, people that will be reading every issue every month of a particular comic um, they can try different things um, com free comic book day is one of the most wonderful things you can give them three or four different ones and they're like oh i really liked this and i didn't like that then you know where to guide them um, through what's coming out every week another part of the um i mean they everybody touts is the you know comics passed a billion dollars in 2017 or 2018 uh, in sales. They're also adding trade paperbacks. What people don't understand about the trade paperback business is that if you, you can't trade weight floppies of a small independent book because it won't get, you know, unless it's a runaway hit like Something's Killing the Children, Saga, there's a there's certain ones that yes the, the the floppy sales keep them going and so then they can produce trade paperbacks, but if you like a comic that has a, a readership of thirty five hundred to five thousand, that won't make issue ten or twelve to have a second trade paperback. Um, it definitely won't make it to you know. Uh, to get a third trade paperback or, you know, um, 18 issues or, or more. Uh, it, just the financial part of it, if you're, if you're talking about uh, through image, which is probably the highest paying for a creator because they are sharing the profits with, um, with image, they, um, they're not taking out enough home to make a living on 3,000 copies after they pay the fees. So that, that, that comic will end, no matter how much you love it. Um, and no matter how much you clamor for it afterwards, it probably won't come back. So if you read issue number one and go, hey, I really like this story, I'll just wait for a trade paperback, you might not even get one. It might end in three issues or four issues and then they won't make a trade paperback. Um, this is something of educating the public that you need to do. If you love a book, you should stick with it. Um, even if you're not going to read them, right? If you're going to trade paper, trade weight, buy the floppies and put them in your collection and save them. I, I, I'm, I'm a plain out reading guy. I, I read my comics. I don't make sure about the bindings. I don't like, 
Oh, the people who are really comic book collectors hate when they watch me read comics because uh, there's thumbprints everywhere. Um, there's probably creases and stuff, but that adds to the collectability. If there weren't people like me, if every copy was pristine, they wouldn't, they wouldn't get any value. Now it gets to the point of <clears throat> new comics versus old comics. There have been a lot of stores in probably the last five years I saw open that are like, oh, we just sell new comics. We don't have back issues. There's very little profit in new comics. And you invariably get you, uh, back issues immediately <laughs> after ordering comics. The second week you get comics, you now have back issues. Um, the profit is in the back issue comics of the collections that you buy, uh, buying at a, at a low percentage rate uh, and then selling uh, at a higher percentage rate. The new comics, everybody's like, well, you get a 50% discount. Some you do, some you don't, uh, depends on your buying. Um, but that doesn't include shipping. Although Marvel does provide free shipping now, I'm sorry, Penguin, their distributor provides free shipping. Uh, Marvel, uh, I mean, DC uh, does not through Lunar and uh, neither does Diamond. So when you add the shipping in, depending on your buying habits, right? So if you buy a lot of stuff, the shipping is a lower percentage. If you buy a little bit of stuff, your percentage uh, on shipping is going to be, the cost is gonna be higher towards your, um, towards your uh, bottom line. But <clears throat> all those negative things aside, it still uh, can be a very profitable business, especially when adding in a lot of different SKUs like magic, like toys, uh, like apparel. Um, now, uh, on apparel, it's very difficult. That's also a very small, in, unless you're making your own for your store and that is uh, a popular uh, item that you sell, the companies kind of sell you apparel at a very high rate. They, wanna, they want you to sell t-shirts at 30 to $40 for a t-shirt. Um, yeah, and then the same Marvel or DC t-shirt is in Walmart for $8. Uh, you know, it may not be exactly the same. It probably won't be exactly the same. But if you want a Captain America shirt and it's an $8 one at Walmart and there's a $30 one at the comic shop, yeah, a percentage of people are gonna buy the $30 one. But the majority of people are gonna buy the $8 one and it's all about numbers, right? I would like to have a thousand people come through my door a week that pay, spend $10, then trying to get a hundred that are gonna spend, you know, a hundred dollars each. So what we're gonna talk about uh, a little bit later on in the show uh, is gonna be uh, starting your accounts with Diamond, with Lunar, with Penguin. Um, gonna give you the websites, um, and we're gonna talk about it. But also again, when I said earlier, you can if you're going through the process and having a hard time and you have some questions, you can always hit me up uh, on any of the social medias. And um, if I don't have, like I said, if I don't have the answer, I'll find somebody who does. But I'd like to say that Diamond, definitely for new accounts, uh, they'll walk you right through it. Uh, they have some fantastic people working at Diamond. Uh, I know that there has been some, uh, you know, in the past, uh, when they were the only game in town, it's the only person you could complain about. Um, I sadly miss when they were the only game in town. Um, I have a very tough time ever getting any kind of contact from Lunar, uh, talking to a human being. Some other people may have a different experience. Please let me know. Let me know how I can get a person to actually talk to me. <laughs> um, Penguin has been, there's, uh, you get a sales rep and you get an, uh, another rep. You see so you have two reps that you can talk to. Uh, one is really about the whole ins and out of buying and the other one is about, you know, promotional stuff and questions about your, um, your whole uh, experience through Penguin. Um, I also am a Scalactic dealer. I have my, my rep is uh, fantastic. 
He uh, is available by phone. He'll do a phone, an order over the phone. They don't have minimums. It's, uh, it's great. And um, it's a really simple ordering system, especially if you're an old timer like me, because it's uh, not a ridiculous experience with click here, go to this, go to this other page, click this other page, um, have this unclicked, uncheck that. Make sure that this, uh, oh, let's uh, make sure that you uh, go back every week and double check that nothing has been added or nothing has been removed. Um, and then make sure on the last day to hit the button or if you don't, you don't get your books. Um, yeah, so I miss, you know, I miss diamond, <laughs> diamond ordering quite a bit. So give us a couple minutes and we're gonna get on the computer and uh, bring up those websites and talk to you about uh, building your account at Diamond, Lunar, and Penguin. All right, so we're at the computer here. It's, uh, we're gonna start out with Diamond. And like I said, it's phenomenally easy to become a, a Diamond dealer. Uh, now you can, they also have internet, like you can be just an internet dealer for Diamond. Um, it's a little bit different process, which I'll have to speak with, uh, I'm gonna have a guest very shortly that uh, doesn't have a brick and mortar and I'll talk to him and I know he has a diamond account and I'll talk to him about how he set that up. But basically you can Google become a diamond distributor dealer. Um, you can go directly to the retailer.diamond.com and basically what, it, what you do is you, you download a PDF which is gonna be the next order cycle and fill out an order they have, there's a, a certain amount that you have to do a month to maintain a diamond account uh, or to open up diamond account. Very easy to make if you're going to be running a, a comic shop. That'll be no issue at all. So you download the PDF, you go through it. You could probably use the previews guide online. Uh, if you're into comics, you've probably been to the previews guide. Uh, go through the previews guide, pick the comics that you want, the amount, the number that you want, and then you can either scan it into the computer and email it to new accounts at diamondcomics.com but it's right there you can just click on it your email will bring it up and you can then just attach it you can fax it they have a fax number in here which i did because uh, i'm a dinosaur and i still use fax machines uh, but if you have a scanner your scanner usually has a fax machine attached so one less step than having to send the email um, of course, the email will also set, if you do it by email, it will set up a beginner relationship. Uh, they also have their direct phone number on here. You can speak to them direct. Um, you're going to have to provide uh, that stuff we talked about in the uh, last episode about setting up your business. Uh, you're going to need your tax ID number and your business name and some other information. Um, possibly some bank, probably have some banking information, uh, but it'll, it's all spelled out there in the form. And um, we'll probably provide um, a look at the form in the next episode. Now, Penguin, it's uh, selfservice.penguinrandomhouse.biz is uh, where the login is at. They have a button in the top right corner that says register an account. You just click on that and it says getting started. It asks for a PRH account number and then the standard address number. Then down below that, it has contact customer service. So you can click on that and it'll open up your Gmail. It'll automatically open up the compose uh, a message, send the message you're interested in opening an account and you'll get a response. Kind of not the best uh, way doing it that way. It's PH Comics. If you just Google that, it has a retailer source, how to set up an account. It's all there. You're still just going to have to contact them for the forms. You click on the forms for a new account. You fill out the new the forms. You get a display kit. You have to send your sales certificate to the new accounts at penguinrandomhouse.com along with some other information. It's a pretty easy step to step by step. You know, Google is your friend actually when you're doing this. So it's just set up account at Penguin. Um, I'll provide the web, uh, what the website looks like, and I'll also provide the information uh, for the uh, for the actual website. It'll be in the uh, information below. And then starting up for Lunar, so you go to uh, Lunar Distribution, 
and it has a button that says uh, login register and then you it, down below the login it has register an account it asks for your account info you put in your account info you create a password your name company name your email address and then once you submit that it'll take you to uh, asking for your reseller certificate scan that in um, you send that and then it'll ask for, uh, it'll talk about the publisher discounts um, if it's a brand new account like everybody that came over from Diamond ended up getting whatever their Diamond uh, percentage was at the time. Um, the one thing about Lunar uh, is that if you don't do a certain amount a week with them, they won't ship your books. You have to be buying at least $125 a week um, or they don't ship your books. So no matter how bad the books are from <laughs> DC, and if you don't have anybody subscribe to them, I think I have three, uh, three or four people subscribe to DC Books, and they're only one DC book each, uh, which come out at different times. They don't all come out on the same week. So basically, I'm warehousing DC Books until they figure out what they're doing with their lives. Um, but as a comic book dealer, you really need to carry it. So again, Going through this process is fairly simple. It sometimes is kind of scary because you're on the hook for a lot of money up front when you're first opening up and getting your new books. Penguin requires you to prepay for your books. Diamond and um, Lunar allow you to pay COD. Uh, once you've built up a relationship, you can request to have an account. Um, I don't do that. Uh, it's just not the way I do business. I own everything in the store. We own everything in the store. Me and my partners own everything in the store. Uh, we don't finance anything. Um, and that way, when times get really lean and you have to tighten your belt, you're not sending a percentage of your profits to pay interest on books that either didn't sell or uh, are sitting in your back bins. The, um, that's just my business model. Some people finance their books because of returnability. You want to buy a thousand uh, books from Boom, and you want to go through Diamond. And if you have, um, yeah, if you have the ability uh, and and the 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 credit, uh, you can buy those thousand books and then return them later for a credit, and then you can reuse that money at a different time. I, I just worry about that model. Um, I know that there, that was a model done through um, workshop uh, Warhammer that they used to make people pay up. They would floor, floor plan you uh, games and toys. And then that percentage just kept and then you were, when you're selling stuff, you were just sending all the money you made from that item to Games Workshop to pay off your interest. So I just don't believe in that model. But like I said, there's a lot of business models out there. And we're going to be talking to people uh, in, throughout the industry that believe differently from me. So again, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. You can also contact me, uh, like I said, through Instagram, through uh, Facebook through Twitter. Uh, I don't, I'm not on Twitter a lot. Uh, Twitterverse is kind of painful. Um, but I do post on there from time to time about comics. So it, I will find it eventually. Best place to probably get me is either through my Facebook page or my Instagram because I'm always posting on Instagram. Um, if you, uh, if there's anything that I'm leaving out or you think I've left out, uh, yeah, please put it in the comments. Uh, this is kind of stream of consciousness. I have done some research. Um, I have obviously signed up and set up all my accounts, but when talking directly into a camera, sometimes things are left out. Uh, but that's why we're going to bring in a lot of other people. Uh, and I hope you enjoy that. And we'll talk to you soon. Keep reading comics.